If we could move people and goods on the water at the cost, speed, and convenience as landborne option, then waterways are no more an obstacle, rather a highway. You know, with the new technology, I believe there is a new way to experience boating. For me, it's a lot of freedom, getting out on the water, being one with nature. And I want more people to really experience that. This isn't just a normal boat. It's all electric. It doesn't just float on the water. It actually flies on hydrofoils that are below the water. My take is everything is going to electrify. Uh, cars are well on their way to being electric. People are trying to electrify aircraft. Our goal is really to electrify the maritime space, really make it a, a zero emission place for vessels. There's an advanced autopilot system in the boat that is actively stabilizing the boat with the flaps on each of the wings. The person who's in the boat driving the boat, they don't have to know anything about flying an airplane, the computer does the rest. Our electric hydrofoil boat is more than 10 times as efficient as a typical gas boat. So that's uh, really what we're trying to do. My name is Dan Henderson. Last year I retired from the military after a 20 year career and I'm here to test the Navier 30 electric boat. We are probably the most advanced electric marine vessel to date in the entire world. What makes this boat advanced when I say most advanced is uh, not just the hydrofoil, not just the electric, it's the tight integration of the hardware and the software and the autonomy stack all working together. You can go as high as 35 knots. Cruising speed is uh, 22 knots. It is really at the forefront of anything that I've ever seen. Genius, in my opinion. 70% of the world is covered in water. We have major waterways and thoroughfares all throughout the United States, uh, on both coasts. And it was just really a unique perspective to see one that I, I hadn't really thought of. Nothing is too crazy if it is backed by the laws of physics and economics. In a traditional boat, you are pushing water. A traditional monohull is pushing water. That takes a lot of energy. So when you have hydrofoils, what it does is just like an airplane, it lifts the boat out of the water, reduces the hydrodynamic drag, and thereby extends the range even on the batteries that we have today. This is all very new to the maritime world. Navier wants to be a, a software-focused maritime company. Boats are going electric, but the biggest challenge with the electric boat and adoption is the range. That's where technology comes in. So it's not just building a boat. You, you have to build a lightweight boat. Our boats are made of carbon fiber, very high strength weight material. Just like an aircraft, you have to make it light to, to get the range and to get the performance. The reason our team has been so effective is we really like pull the best people from all these different fields. Paul Beaker, recognized throughout the world as like the expert at making hydrofoils. He designed the hull, he designed the foils, he designed the boat. He will say form follows function and it's very important to keep that in mind when designing efficient vessels. All my past experience has been doing flight control for, for drones. This is very much just like making an autopilot for an airplane, so I was able to do that very quickly. It's very quiet, which is nice. It's very smooth. When you accelerate, you don't get the jerk that you would get from a normal engine. The computer system in it is very complex, but it's also very user-friendly. The operating systems in both are very easy to maneuver. The hydrofoil on the boat alone kind of replicates like how an electric car would feel if you were driving it. We're talking three, five foot seas out there. Once the boat got up on hydrofoils, you couldn't even feel it. Compared to a lot of the boats that I've dealt with in the past, some of them could be more difficult than others. It was pretty, uh, pretty eye-opening. It's got a docking assist feature to it that sells itself. 
was probably one of the most amazing things I've seen on a vessel. Where in the U.S. do you, do you see the, the major application for these things? Whether that's San Francisco, Seattle, uh, you know, New York, New Jersey, uh, you name it, all the coastal cities are great for this kind of a, a commuter boat. San Francisco is a great example. Anywhere you're stuck on the traffic on the bridge for like hours, why do that? Why not go point to point on the water at a fraction of time? If every marina had a charging station, I mean, you could go anywhere you really wanted to. So I think once they understand that aspect of it, the sky's the limit at that point. All the industries are moving to electric because if we want to have the planet survive, we have to build technology that is in synergy uh, with keeping our planet pristine and sustainable. If you look at history, whether the invention of microchip, personal computers, or the Apollo mission, they were all hard missions and things that have very small chances of success. When they succeeded, they fundamentally change how we interact with the world. For me, I want to close my eyes and see a future where you have fleets of water taxis in coastal cities, where it is not like a wow kind of a thing. It is so integrated in our daily lives, just like the buses, the trains. I want a future where we have enabled a new kind of industry for people. Save time, add convenience, and get to places in, you know, wink of an eye.